Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris, and I'd like to welcome you to this conversation about your Kundalini awakening experience. Today, I have a special guest coming all the way from the next seat in the car that I'm in right now. Her name is Magdalene de Deus, and she is she has uh, helped film many of the videos in, in Europe, and I would like her to say hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and, of course, the sick queen of comfortable comfort. I would like to Hello, Mary. Hi, Prism. Hello, Magdalene Bedeus. It's good to be here with you both and with all the listeners on this cool evening here in Ireland. <laughs> I will begin as usual, I think, Chris, and then just give people, if I may, the address they can go to if they would like to support the work that Chris does um, for Kundalini Awakening Systems. The address you can go to is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And as always, on the upper right-hand corner, you will find the Donate button, and it is very easy to give a donation. Donations are very much appreciated because Chrism works full-time in the work that he he does, and donations support the program and support the teachings um, that come from the Kundalini through him to all of us um, in our Kundalini awakening and in all the venues that Chrism does this work and this teaching so again that's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com and I'm looking forward to this program Chris as am I as am I and and so let us begin and thank you for those announcements um, in the middle of the program I would like to uh, pass the microphone over to Rosemary who has joined us to here and I see you now hello Rosemary and Eileen uh, I would like to pass the mic to you, to you in the program. However, let's go ahead and get started. Um, today's topic uh, wants to be about healing, kundalini healing, what you have to do, uh, what you have to not do. What what are the options when it comes to kundalini healing? And one of the things that, that I've noticed with uh, Magdalene de Deus here is the power of prayer for uh, when you have the awakened kundalini a person has an exceptional level of, of power that they don't get to be in in control of the kundalini pretty much controls its power within the individual and so you may you may run into people that say yeah oh i can do this with my key and I can make it go up and down my spine and I you know fountaining out my 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 the top of my head and and I you know and you'll you'll hear all these wonderful great uh, <laughs> uh, statements about what that person can do with their kundalini and I'm gonna no, no the kundalini decides what it wants to do and it decides what and where and how and who it is going to affect uh, another person. It's just the person's ego that is giving themselves the the uh, the power, so to speak. And and I do want to make that correction. It is not about you holding power. It is not about your phenomena. Phenomena is no power. Okay, phenomena is an experience that a person has of an energetic quality or spiritual quality. Uh, typically unexplainable by science. And certainly, uh, uh, if Kalini allows a person to feel like they have control, of it, well, then they're being given a teaching about what it is to to claim and to have ownership of their condition 
but it also is giving a person an opportunity to step back and realize that this is grace from the divine. This is not God saying, okay, you can master me now. God doesn't say that. Kundalini doesn't say that. You'll, you'll hear cars going by, just so you know. I'm in a, I'm in a parking lot outside the tourist information uh, zone in uh, Sedona, Arizona. So you'll hear some, car, some cars. It's really hot here, by the way. <laughs> if I pass out during the show, just, you know, just, you know, <laughs> I'll pass it over to Magdalene. She can continue. Uh, when you hear somebody saying, oh, you know, I'm the master of Kundalini. I am a Kundalini master, and it's just not so. If anything, the, the best thing uh, out of that type of a statement is that the, it is the Kundalini that is in charge. It is the Kundalini consciousness itself that has the mastery, and that is, that is uh, infusing the person's body, infusing their five bodies, all you know, the five koshas, the five bodies of the human expression, the physical, the spiritual, the mental, psychological, and the emotional. These five koshas are what the kundalini is in charge of and will expand upon the individual itself or themselves. You know, they don't get to have that much control. I mean, they can choose whether or not they're going to surrender to the kundalini or they're going to resist. And if they resist, well, then certain things will happen. If they surrender, certain things will happen. It's always preferable to surrender. If any of you who are listening in the archives right now, and I'd like to welcome you and say hello to you, uh, for those who are listening in the archives and those who are listening in the chat room right now, if any of you are there, uh, all of you as well, uh, the kundalini itself welcomes your surrender. It doesn't, it's not, you're not surrendering like you would surrender to an enemy or anything like that. You're not rolling over and playing dead. You know, you're, you're basically saying, okay, I realize that this is a force that is bigger than me. This is a force that is of the, of the divine. And, and I am very grateful and I'm very happy. And, and in my gratitude and my graciousness, I will uh, surrender the control of my life, of control of my body, of my mind, my five koshas, my five bodies of expression to the kundalini. Okay. And, and so this is what I would encourage. I would encourage everyone to look at the kundalini in this way. Uh, you know, when a lot of people, you know, they're to certain levels of self-inflicted grandiosity or self-inflicted... Uh, I think I'm going to close these windows a little bit here. One moment. Lots of cars deciding to drive by now that I'm doing the show. Okay. So, you know, a lot of these people, for some reason, they've had a hard childhood. They've had some sort of a difficult uh, level of experiences in their life, and their their self-validation has taken some hits along the way. And uh, it's this self-validation that, that people may need at a time in their life in order to qualify themselves as being good enough and and happy enough and famous enough. And, you know, there, there are many levels of psychological uh, attitudes and, and ideologies that a person uh, will will jump into in order to find themselves a balance uh, first, first and foremost with themselves, and then secondly with the kundalini. The kundalini will wait for them to come around. It knows that person has had a hard, hard uh, karmic uh, uh, experience, you know, during childhood and the early years of adulthood. And, and this is, if you didn't have a hard childhood, it doesn't mean that you're ineligible for kundalini. It just means that that you already paid the price of your karma at another time. Okay, uh, for many many people with the Kundalini, it is that those are early moments of childhood where the the many different aspects of karma from the previous life and then other previous lives will will come to be collected. That debt will be paid, so to speak. That balance will be achieved. And so so realize that when you hear somebody boasting about you know them being a Kundalini master and you know, da, 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 all of this. Uh, has nothing to do with having supremacy over kundalini, even if they think it does. You 
can hear that and just to go, oh, 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 I see what's going on here. Okay, well, that's all right. That's all right. You know, they, they're at that stage. They can, they can feel and believe what they want, but I'm not necessarily going to buy into it. Okay, so that is the the attitude that I would suggest a person have when they're, you know, when they come into contact with people who who need certain strong levels of healing uh, due to the, the the difficult levels of karmic uh, uh, experiences they had at the uh, early part of their childhood, and this 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 leads us in to the greater manifestations of kundalini, kundalini healing as well. In order for you to really, really, really begin to understand what kundalini healing is all about, you need to begin to to give yourself to your kundalini. <coughs> it's okay, my darling, you can call. It's all, it's all right. She's sitting right next to me here in the car, and she's trying to be so sweet, so quiet. Well, thank you, my dear. And and I'm sure everybody else is thanking you. But it's, if you got a cough, please, cough. <laughs> okay, so the the first thing you really need to do is to begin to surrender yourself completely and totally into the kundalini. Uh, you know, try to take down any ego-based uh, uh, ideologies that you are doing this, that can only be done because you want it to be done or you command it to be done. <laughs> Give yourself to the kundalini. Give yourself to God, to the divine within, not to the ego within. Okay, that's a very, very, very important first step. You give yourself to the divine within, not the ego. I'm going to have to take my iPad out of here because it's such a little I'm a little concerned about that. It could be just the fact that we're in Arizona. Uh, and so, as you begin to surrender into the grace and the love and the gifts and the beauty of the Kundalini, you begin to understand how awesomely huge this energy is and what it wants to do through you. Uh, I'll use Magdalene Deus as an example because she's here. Magdalene has begun the the exploration of the power of a kundalini-enhanced prayer. It's exceptionally effective for people, but not in the way a person, uh, you know, locked behind the five senses would expect. Because the kundalini has a much greater uh, level of understanding about the underpinnings of the universe and how things are woven together, how things interact, and what what levels of karma a person has, those who are doing the healing, giving, giving the prayer with the kundalini, and those who are receiving it. The kundalini will know the karma of the person receiving and be able to develop a, an application of its divine self into that person's equation. Prayer is a very, very positive, powerful uh, uh, practice that a person can do for kundalini healing. And once again, when you're not, when you're not, uh, uh, when you when you're not claiming, you know, ownership of the kundalini and mastership of the kundalini, when you're not doing that, uh, you're taking your ego out of the control seat, and the kundalini is coming in and beginning its control of the situation. And as it begins its control of the situation, that is when the karma is read. That is when and, uh, that person can. And once again, I must state that it is not always what you, as a five cents per, would expect to have happen. Okay, just as in many things with the kundalini, we have to look at the equation differently. We have to look at it with new eyes, with the eyes of a child, but also with the eyes of compassion, the eyes of honesty, the eyes of truth, the eyes of love. And uh, before I forget, if anybody would like to call in and and talk uh, with me about their Kundalini awakening experience, no matter what it is, uh, you can call this number, 347-934-0026, 347-934-0026. And I'm going to ask Magdalene to, to talk a little bit about her experience 
with praying for other people through the Kundalini and perhaps some of the experiences she's had uh, with regards to the, the positive outcomes that have occurred. So, so Magna, uh, how, how did you first uh, feel when you started praying to the Kundalini for the healing of another person? Um, I'm going to talk more about how I feel at the moment because I can't really recall how I used to feel when I started. Okay. So, All right. um, so at the moment when I pray for another person, uh, I will just pray to the Kundalini for this specific person and I will really try and um, at the end I always finish and may, may it be according to your will. So I really try to get my ego out of the equation. And at the end, typically, I get a, what I would call a kriya because I don't, I'm not sure what that is. But very often, I get kriyas or like a tensioning of the body inside as I do the, as I say the prayer. Sometimes, but not, not so often, I, I might feel a bit of bliss also coming at the end of it. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. And, and what, what can you see? Uh, from a results standpoint happening with you when you do these types of prayers for others? So uh, I'm not quite sure about your question. Uh, concerning the the response for other people, yeah. um, I can really see, I think it's been very positive most of the time. I can really see the the prayers are being answered in in. Uh, Usually, quite. Um, I mean, I, we don't have to wait very long to see to, mm. to see a response. So, so that's and that's helping me. That has also helped me to to believe more and more in the prayers I'm saying for other people. Yeah, yeah. See, now this is this is a, a really good thing that you bring up here. I mean, with regards to uh, the timing and the healing, it can be instant. Um, as if you were, if any of you can go to Hawaii. Uh, you know, or at least look into the to the Hoon religion. I've I've talked a bit about it on this program before, so I won't go into that too much. But Kundalini healing can be instantaneous. It isn't always, but it can be instantaneous. And and this is something that is very important to understand that when you say a prayer, a Kundalini prayer, and as, as Magdalene does, uh, you can watch Magdalene. You know give people prayers, and you'll see her go into prayers. Those prayers come during her prayer. Actually, sometimes it it's a, it shows the end of the prayer, or the, the sequence of the prayer has been finished, and boom, she gets a prayer. Am I right? Yep. And so uh, this is what I want to talk with, with everyone about today, are these, these prayers for healing are very, very powerful. And so once again, we need to control how we think. We need to control how we think because I know that when, when a person gets mad and they're saying, gosh, I wish that person would just jump off a cliff, you know, and we have to be fair. You don't want to think those, those ways anymore. You have to mature your thoughts. You have to mature the way you feel about other people doesn't mean you can't get angry. doesn't mean that you're never, ever irritated. doesn't mean any of those things. What it does mean is that you're not going to say something that would be a prayer that, that would be, shall we say, not constructive for that other person who's been irritating you or hurting you or something of that nature because that may come true. The Kundalini may allow that to come true just to teach you the lesson about it is to control your thoughts. Uh, Amelia, if you would come online again, please. I, I know that uh, it's going to take a little while here for you to jump in. A little bit coming in from Ireland. Hello. Hello, I'm here. Uh, have you? What are your experiences when you're saying prayers for other people in a healing vector? Um, something similar, Chrism. Um I, the ego definitely, I go into prayer and devotion to the Kundalini and I will not have my own wishes present at all for what I want to have occur. That's not there. When I pray to the Kundalini, it is, I speak to the Kundalini of the 
um, the intention, I suppose, of what has been requested. But it is, as Magalie said, it is through the will of the divine that what is given or what is not given. And my experience has been that I will feel sensations within my own body sometimes in areas that um, the healing is being given to the other person. Um, and I have had occur um, beautiful um, uh, visual things have occurred and also instant healing such as things when I'm with somebody in somebody's presence there has been instant healing of burns given. I mean, instant chrism. Um, mm-hmm. I have had instant... Kundalini has given somebody else instant healing in their eyes. So um, the Kundalini is miraculous. It's, it's just amazing, really, and um, chooses to do what it does. Yeah, it's got nothing really to do with me. Well, it does. It does have a lot to do with you because you are that walking, talking, holy grail. You are that container that has legs that is walking all over this world and in, and and giving the inner divine the opportunity to help other people recognize and experience their own inner divine so that this world can come into a greater balance with the divine structures that hold it together. So it has a lot to do with the individual, but it, you know, you know, we don't have to, uh, you know, feel that we're being egotistical if we recognize that we are the Kundalini as well. I mean, the Kundalini works through us. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're doing what I said at the beginning of the show, having a lot of self-aggrandizement. Uh, but you got to recognize that the, you know, the reason I'm asking you to control the thoughts is because you have the Kundalini. You have God's ear, and God's ear has you. And so you, you're going to need to recognize that and validate that. Not so much for the ego, but, but for the surrender to the Kundalini. Talking to you, my dear. I know you just you, <laughs> you just broke up there, Chrism. Yes, I understand what you're saying. How's yes? No, that's okay. You're back again. Sort of. <laughs> yes. How's the sound? <laughs> it's uh, fine now. There, there was just a little break up there for a couple of moments. It's fine yeah, I again. I just dropped the iPad. <laughs> uh, drop that it. would explain. I would explain it. <laughs> yes, well, I, I heard what you were saying about um, about all of that, and I think the listeners did as well, um, that, you know, we, we don't have to become so, um, you know, that we can acknowledge our presence and our compassion and our surrender and our honesty and our love in being there and the Kundalini working through us. But I didn't hear Absolutely. the very end of what you said. Well, so, so yeah, now that's basically the point. Um, yeah, is, is there anyone in the chat room? We have a few people in the chat, chat room. Julie is there, Elizabeth, Fashji, Sukha. So perhaps they'd let us know how the sound is. If somebody yeah. would type it. Yeah. I think it's pretty good, Chris, and it's good on my side anyway. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, well, let, let us continue. So the scenario is, is that, when you have the kundalini, and I know that there are those who are listening that are struggling to have the kundalini, they want the kundalini, you know, and they're working very hard to develop uh, the kundalini, and they'll, you know, they're visiting the shamans, visiting the many different teachers, they're, you know, they're getting shakti path, they're following, you know, the, the many different paths that are available for people to begin to open into the kundalini. But having the kundalini, you must surrender to its control. So that, that means to take a step back from all of the planning and all of the organizing, all of the, the issues control around finding the kundalini. You don't, once, once the kundalini is there, then it's there. Then you begin 
you begin to surrender yourself into that grace. You begin to surrender yourself completely, and no longer are you out there seeing, and, you know, the grass should not be greener anywhere in comparison with the kundalini. Do you understand what I'm saying? The, there should not ever be a choice that is better for you. And this is sometimes a hard thing to figure out because kundalini can be very challenging at times. Very challenging to the point where, you know, you'll, you'll start looking for a relaxation of the symptoms. You're too hot. You can't sleep. You can't digest the food that you like. You can't eat the food that you like. You can't drink the fluids that you want to drink. You can't interact with the people the way you once had interacted. And they don't know you because you're not interacting with them the same way that you've always interacted with them. And so they're a little like, what's up with Prism? What's up with Magdalene? What's up with with Amelia Santara? Why is she so different now? You know, and so there's a lot of, of change that you as a Kundalini person uh, went out into other people's lives, but also in your own life. And so when you look at these things, and then you begin to, to look at your world around you, the social world around you, who would benefit most from a healing and why? Okay, why are you giving them a healing? Because you're a, you're a loving individual and you want to give that person the, the grace of health. Well, that's a good enough reason right there. That's a good enough reason. And then you sit there and you go into prayer. And if Magdalene de Deus would, would be so kind, maybe she could uh, talk about how she formulates that prayer. Okay, I just need a little time because I have it in French, of course. So let me <laughs> think about this. Okay. Yeah, I usually say um, I typically start with my Kundalini. Um, I address to you this person, uh, excuse me, I address to you this prayer concerning that and that. That's or, or, how or, I, I start, you know, I start we'll, we'll this. We'll, we'll call the prayer person the Joe Smith. So okay, so um, my Kundalini, um, I address to you this prayer for Joe Smith, and then I I, I say... Uh, what I wish for this person. And as I said, at the end, I always finish with something that I think translates like, and may it be according to your will. And and that's, yeah, that's typically how I, I would formulate the, the prayer. And sometimes, I mean, typically typically it's not a long, a long prayer because very often, very often it happens when I see a person, for example, who needs help. So I would say a prayer very quickly uh, right there in the moment, so then of course I don't spend. I typically don't spend. Um, it's typically not a very long prayer, I would say. Well, and now that you have the microphone, uh, Magdalene, how have you had to change your thoughts? How have you had to change the way you you have your inner dialogue now that you have Kundalini? How has that changed? If you can, if you can tell us. Um, I know, I mean, for me, the biggest challenge is probably the ego, the vanity, which I uh, I feel very strongly. For example, the vanity, if I feel vanity in me, that would be amplified. Um, and because I feel it so strongly, uh, then straight away I, I try to recognize this and move away from for example, in that case, this vanity. So you would move away from vanity. Uh, and this would help your uh, inner thought. Do you do, you do like, uh, do you, you just say, oh, that's that's vanity, I'm not going to do that? Yeah, I, I, try, I sometimes I just say, go away. Ah, okay, so vanity, go away. Well, that's very good. That's an excellent, excellent technique. And and she's she's actually quite quite correct. I and mean, when he, when you're driving along the freeway, you don't have a lot of time to formulate a prayer. You know, and say, uh, uh, 
time consuming way, you know, saying, oh, you know, putting it all together, you can just think it, see it, and do it, and it's done. So you see the person, you you think the prayer, the prayer is given, you might have a Kriya or something as, a, as an indicator, and then it's done, then it's done, and, and then you forget about it. You totally take yourself out of that equation, and you allow what the kundalini has given for that person to be given just between your kundalini and that person, not between you, your ego, or any of those things. You know, you begin to really make your separation. Separations are exceptionally important when it comes to kundalini healing. And, and as you as you begin to make your separations after the healings that you do, those healings will go much stronger harder for the person because you're no longer trying to mitigate it. You're no longer... You know, you're not trying to control it or, or decide what there is being used. That's all being done by the kundalini. In a way, kundalini healing and prayer work is very, very simple to do. It's not a hard, you know, I get some of these books and some of these teachers going, well, you got to have your fingers in this certain position and you you got to be able to say all the sutras, you know, uh, things from this special magical book over here, and then you know if it's God's will, then the healing will be given. Well, this isn't the case with Kundalini. Kundalini is God's will, and if you're seeing somebody who needs a healing, you know, like an accident on a road or or some other kind of thing, uh, you. You do that prayer. You let the kundalini do the work. Let it do the work. You are that. You hold the energy. You're the grail, the holy grail, the walking, talking holy grail, as I said earlier. You are that gift of grace to humanity. Uh, you are that person. You are that grace, that that demi-saint, shall we say. And so you allow that to occur. You really just you know, when you see that accident, you say the prayer, see it, feel it, let it go, separate from it. Okay, if you have any questions about this or any kind of different scenarios that you'd like to introduce into this conversation, uh, please call this number, 347-934-0026. As I mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, there are certain, you know, we are here in Sedona, Arizona, and, and uh Magdalene and I have gone out to some of these uh, psychic vortexes that they uh, that they uh, that that has made Sedona famous. And we went out to one last night, and you know we met a very very wonderful engaging couple, uh, a father and a daughter, uh, up on on Bell Rock, and yeah, a lot of beautiful you know good friendship developed. Uh, that too, in itself, is a level of pain. I thought there was a level of pain between the father and the daughter, and and uh, I could tell that that our presence, Magdalene and myself, uh, we were there. And, and he's, you know, he even brought up, said, "Is this an accidental visit?" You know, he brought this up at different times, and and no, of course, nothing with the Kundalini will be seen as accidental. Uh, so. Recognize it like when you're down here in in uh, you know where all these crystals are, where all these uh, amplifiers of psychic and electrical and you know the different uh, levels of energy, uh, even the body electric. Uh, when you're down here, you know, with that in mind, then then yeah, you're going to you're going to to have uh, an amplification of what the kundalini is bringing through you to others. Uh, so when you go to, say, the mountains, uh, anywhere where there's granite and there's uh, many diverse uh, levels of crystalline mineral structure around you, uh, know that, that the crystals in those rocks are going to amplify the kundalini. They're gonna they're gonna amplify it. It's gonna be stronger. It's gonna be beautiful for you. Very very beautiful experience. And so if you can get out into the mountains around uh, granite or in other types of crystalline structures, uh, do so. 
do so as, as best you can. Do do that. And now, uh, as as I mentioned before, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Rosemary. And I believe Rosemary has some announcements. Hello, Rosemary. Hi. Hello, everyone. And thank you for this topic, Kristen. This is uh, very inspiring and helpful. And I probably would add in my prayers for people considering coming to the seminar and that they be listening to their kundalini. I frequently say that to them, to be listening. And it's a good message for me to remember, too. So the seminar, the Kundalini Awakening Seminar, led by our leader, Chrisom, is September 27th and 28th here in the Twin Cities. uh, We have two, well, a little bit less than two months yet. We have close to a half a dozen registrations. New conversation with someone this morning about that. Well, uh, can you just go ahead and give us the dates and the times, Rosemary? September 27th and 28th, 9 to 5, Saturday and Sunday at the Best Western Dakota Ridge in Egan. And, and, for, and how do they get a hold of you? 651-452-3161, Rosemary G. at usinternet.com. So the phone number that they can reach you at is 651-452-3161, and your email is rosemaryg at usinternet.com. Is that correct? That is. All right, all right. Well, very, very, very good. And I, I just uh, want to let the people in uh, Minnesota know that Rosemary Gillespie is working very hard to bring this information to you, that, you know, she is – this is – is a kundalini healing that she is giving. And and so, you know, as as a, a propos of our conversation right now, now she at least fifty percent, which in actuality for Rosemary equals about a hundred percent because she's walking out up there by all these different towns. She's really doing her best to uh to bring this information to to, to the masses there in uh in uh, Minnesota, and I want to I want to extend uh, a heartfelt gratitude to you, Rosemary. Thank you for the efforts that you're doing on behalf of the Kundalini. Thank you. Okay, my my privilege. Yes, and we are blessed for that privilege. Okay, I'm going to check the blue, my dear. And so you know. With regards to the healing and the kundalini, you don't have to do the Reiki thing where you got the hands over them and you're waiting for hot or the cold or for some discarnate entity to plug itself into your hands so that it can plug itself into somebody's body that's you know they're ill. I uh, certainly don't recommend that. Not necessary to do with kundalini. They don't. Uh, they don't have to do anything but just be who they are. And this. This is a little hard for even the state because most of the patients, most of the people that are going through spiritual healing, they expect to have you wave their hands over them. They expect that. They want that. There's a certain level of ceremony uh, that a person, you know, um, acclimated to within the society here in the West, uh, in the United States especially. But I think also in Europe. Uh, yes, Probably, but um, I can't speak too much about that because I'm not quite sure what people would expect in Europe concerning healings or I'm not very familiar with all this. Well, uh, let's just talk about the people in France. Are the people in France open and responsive to spiritual types of healing? Uh, I think so because, for example, at work, uh, there's a woman who's very open to what she does. Um and she's explained to me, yeah, she started opening a healing center. I don't know exactly what she does, but she's explained to me, yeah, she has lots of people coming to her. So so I suppose, yeah, there are, there are people there who are, who are also interested. I think that, you know, before the American Medical Association existed, that shamanic forms of healing were far more commonplace and far more expected uh when you had a medicine woman or a medicine man or or you know a, a shaman person who would 
who would cover those areas for the for the tribe. You know, there in the past, I think the distant past, you know, we were really really uh, held, held together by, by means of the Kundalini, and as as people began to to uh, trade in their natural abilities or abilities that were more conducive to ego expression, well, that the, the the Kundalini and the spiritual expressions began to recede into our memory and then to become totally forgotten. And so I think this is a great level of, of remembering that the Kundalini brings for a person to have. Uh, so I want everyone who is listening to this to really go into themselves and see and feel that primal energy, that shamanic energy within themselves that allows a kundalini healing prayer to be served. Uh, you don't have to be a kahuna. You don't have to be a shaman to do this, really. All you need is the kundalini. Yes, yes, yes. everybody has the kundalini at the base of the spine. Yeah, everybody does. Uh, but not everybody has it in the awakened state. And it's the awakened, activated slash state that I feel is the most important uh, area for a person to have. Now, we have people who have a natural cliff healing. They, they have, through their birth and through their karma, you know, they've been allowed to, to experience uh, levels of healing that other people don't have, even Kundalini awakened people, you know. And so, it's not to say that that the person needs to be cogent or or recognizing of their Kundalini. Uh, it does say that you know there's a lot of karma that goes along with being mature. Uh, there's a lot of choice. There's a lot of sacrifice. There's these are the levels of selfless service that I'm talking about that tie in to the healing. Uh, you know, when, I, when I talk about selfless service, let me give you an example that because I have Magdalene de Deus here. What, this is what Magdalene does. Uh, she, on occasion, she will go into a, a, a uh, convalescent in the city she lives in, and she will visit people. She'll talk with them. Them. She'll push them in a wheelchair. She'll mess with them. She'll she'll give of her grace to people, and it's not because they're sick. You know, it's it's just you know part of it. And this is just me, and she can correct me if she wants. But part of it is how we treat our elder people, our elder, uh, you know, our elderly. You know how we treat them in the West. We just send them off and just kind of visit them every now and again. Right? Yep, yeah, that's right. And so, and so, there's a certain level I feel of abuse inside of that uh, equation. Not abuse that is purposeful or anything like that. It's just that we're not appreciating the the level of of grace that they have. They're beginning to to have the, the retro birth, which which is death. Death is the retro. Right, birth and death, basically the same thing. You're, you're, you're dying. Dying is being birthed into another dimension. Birthing is being, uh, you know, killed to a different dimension. So in a way, uh, these people are being are prepared for their journey. And oh my gosh, is it so hard to give them the love and the respect and the acceptance that they need uh, with that? Yes, Amelia. I'm not sure if you have a window down, but there's a fierce noise like a wind. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, had okay. the, I had it in front of the air conditioner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Oh, my gosh. My creature comforts got me. <laughs> I'm all okay. So but, that's okay. Then. It's gone now. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it Thank you. Thank you. And that was my lead. Did I lead tell you? No, I can hear this. Not this phone. I can hear everything. Okay, well, thank you. It's like what happens with you and the wind blowing, you know, so I knew it was a wind thing. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) So, yeah, so, yeah, so, you know, let us, let us honor our, it doesn't mean that you can't take take them off. Sometimes they need that kind of service, but you don't abandon them there. 
Okay. You don't abandon them there, and you know they're not. It's it's it. There's something to be said I mean, for the for uh, the Nichols, uh, you know, keeping their grandmother and grandfather in high honor. And listening to their experiences and and allowing their experience to really begin to to help solve the problems of life that they may currently be having, we need to respect elders in a way that is more than just shoving them off into a convalescent hospital. If they need to be taken there, that's fine. But you know that becomes a a, a place for you to visit daily. <laughs> you just know you love the way I'm just organizing your life, so. <laughs> <laughs> and and Magdalene, how do you feel when you go there? Um, so when I go there, um I'm gonna talk especially about how people respond. Um they they basically basically the the women who are there and the two men who are there specifically, uh they keep telling me they, they are to see me, how grateful they are to see me, that I'm this child that yeah, please come back. Uh, as, as soon as I walk into there, they, they've got this smile on their face. Yeah, I, re- I really see they're happy. What a wonderful joy to be able to give people such grace, Magdalene. And I want to thank you personally right now for the, for the gift of grace that you give to people that way consistently over and over and over again. And I'm going to recommend this as a way of strengthening your connection with your kundalini and strengthening through that connection your ability to to have kundalini prayers be as effective as we both know yours are okay now when uh when i first started to to look at the whole idea of healing uh, kundalini uh because i wasn't a prayer oriented person i didn't really you know, that didn't really gel for me at all. That was just kind of like, oh, no, please, you know, I'm not in church again, am I? You know, and the Kundalini just allowed me, because of my previous, uh, you know, that, that I came in with, I was allowed to see into a person's equation, you know, see through their skin, see into their body, see into their organs, look at different areas of blockage, look at different areas of disease, these types of things. And and uh, I was allowed to, actually I was guided to do certain types of things that would help uh, that person heal. So for instance, uh, the Kundalini would, would color an illness black. So I'd be able to, I'd be looking into a person's body and I could see black. Now we all have black, black is quite a, a big deal. Yeah. Constantly responding to uh, to uh, definite illnesses. We all have cancer running through our bodies, you know, and the immune system is the one that shuts it down. And so, you really need to take take care of your immune system, and you need to really the people that you're healing, and the people that the Kundalini is healing through you, you. You know, you need to maybe talk to them about really taking care of the immune system. God put the immune system in us for a purpose, and the purpose isn't to suppress it like so many of the drugs are doing these days. They're called immunosuppressants. And I don't suggest that you shut down that immune system unless you've got some sort of a faulty immune system that that is giving you a challenge that way. Well, then, like AIDS or some other diseases will attack the body. But you've got to understand that they're atta- it's attacking the body for a specific reason. It's not attacking the body because, oh, Wow, there's a body. Let's attack it. Not that simple. Okay, so so really, really do uh, you know let people know that they need to take care of that immune response. Uh, you know this this you know this takes me right into the whole vaccination problem. You know the MDs are so caught up into their relationship with the uh, big pharmaceutical companies that they're basically, they have lost their way. They are no longer medical doctors. They're chemical doctors. You know, you, you got to be a chemistry major to be an MD these days. Okay. And, you know, they're not going to let your immune system do its job. They want that pharmaceutical to do the job. 
yeah, you know, forget about what the body brought on with it. You know, let's just do big pharma. Not all MDs are like this, but I think the vast majority of them are. And this is something that really needs to change, I think, for our health to to substantially improve. And this is across the board. All the populations need to maybe get off of the bandwagon of big pharmaceutical. Okay, you know you you're not having uh, uh, you know you're not having a problem because the the chemistry hasn't been created yet to take care of it. You're having a problem because some aspects of your lifestyle or your history are demanding some attention from you. And for the most part, in the West, we're going to give that attention over to the MD. Oh, take care of me, doctor. Here's $20 million. Okay. Which, you know, so I'm not I, – I would prefer to trust the MD in a person first. That's the God-given grace that we need to have our own healing in the way that our body and this is going to be amplified. Look at the immune system will be amplified through that awakening. And that also goes to the person that you're doing the, the healing prayer for. The Kundalini will use the body constituents first. You don't see Kundalini going going over to Dollar Drug and buying paracetamol. Because somebody has a headache, go, okay, here's your paracetamol. No. Kundalini gets right in there and begins to do the work. And I'm going to suggest that, you know, in accordance with your Kundalini, that you find great admiration and great love for the level of your own immune response that you have right now. And for those of you like Amelia and Rosemary and Eileen and Magdalene and other people, Fasci, everybody, Julie, you have... Kundalini, so therefore you have a Kundalini enhanced immune response. Now, the old habits that you have of eating a Snickers for dinner, or maybe drinking uh, Gatorade as a as a midnight, uh, you know, beverage, those things will need to change, and your ego won't want them to change. No, I like my midnight Snickers, but you're going to have to change, and so you know this. this Oh my gosh! If, if, if Kundalini is also good and great, how come I can't have my midnight snacks? Why? Why? <laughs> In my case, I would get a terrible stomach ache. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to really. You have to sacrifice how you were to embrace how you are becoming. You don't get to be who you once were anymore. But many now, the hand of God is upon your shoulder, and you don't get to shove the hand of God off your shoulder. You understand? Within the, the Kundalini, and we, and as we start looking at our own responses to our own immune system and our, and our own uh, equation within the Kundalini, uh, you want to really begin to let go of the fears that you've had in the past about this or that. Okay, uh, Trust the Kundalini completely. Trust the Kundalini completely. And if the Kundalini tells you to go to an MD, then go to the MD. Go to the MD. If the Kundalini is giving you symptoms and and you're scared for your health because it's just so different than what you're used to having, you're so far outside your comfort zone. Well, well, then go to the ER. Let them hook you up. You know, if you're having that rapid heartbeat or you're feeling, you know, like you have uh, some sort of an energetic imbalance where you can't get to sleep or you can't stay awake or any any of the many, many, many different uh, behaviors and actions that happen to a person with the Kundalini, well, then go to the ER, let them hook you up. You know, if they're honest, they won't find anything. And I say if they're honest, they won't find anything. If if the doctor needs a Maserati payment, he might, you know, start guessing. 
But for the most part, the Kundalini will, I think, will, will help you stay away from folks that, that maybe have a, a different agenda. For the most part, I've seen that happen with myself, and I've seen it happen with other people. So I, I can, I can pretty, unless you're really going to buy into the whole MD thing, and you, you're going to be, you know, giving yourself chemicals that will try to break down the Kundalini awakening and things of that nature. A lot of people that have the Kundalini syndrome try to do that. Well, then, you know, you're you're going to venture into areas that are going to be difficult, to say the least. So accept the Kundalini as the ultimate force within you. Accept the divine. Accept God as the ultimate force within you. I'm not talking God, Jesus. I'm not talking God, Krishna, or Buddha, or Allah, or any of those guys, or gals. Oh, I guess guys in that case. I'm talking about the divine totally. The divine. You can call it God. You can call it whatever the name you're calling it. Uh, replicating and laughing and, and, and having a great time. There is more to life. There's a lot more to life. And for those of you that may be stuck in some morbid position within your country and within your culture, you know, you're working eight to five, eight to five, same thing, 60 cycle hum from the fluorescent bulb, you know, co computer arm, as they call it, computer arm, uh, you know, so there's many, many different ways uh, for a person to really begin to look into their own healing equation and to begin that level of healing before or even at the same time that they begin to heal other people. Sometimes we have to heal others first before we can get enough confidence to heal our own equation. And as long as your intentions are pure and as long as you're, you know, you're surrendering to your kundalini and letting the kundalini do the work, can we go out of the equation, things are going to go well. Don't have the expectation of seeing instantaneous results. Magdalene does. Magdalene, she can get instantaneous results right now, okay? And that's because she's been practicing and working with this for the last four years. She's had her awakening for about five or six? Uh, yes, I think it's about five years, I suppose. And would you mind sharing with, with everybody what you said to God, <laughs> what the question you asked? <laughs> Um, yes, it's a time when I was very sad. It was a difficult time for me in my life. And I sat uh, in, on my bed. Um, and also, I mean, I was feeling sad, but also at the same time, I remember uh, I was really attracted to being close to God. Um, and I said to God, please, uh, I would like to be closer to you. Um, and I, I also remember another prayer I said to God. I said to God, if you if you would like me to be, if you think it's appropriate for me to be a healer, uh, please could you allow this to happen according to your will? Or and then what happened? Um, and then and then and then uh, uh, yes, and then I, I started meditating for about three weeks, <laughs> and. Um, and one night, I really couldn't sleep because I could feel these type of bubbles going up my spine and kind of getting stuck around my nose. And I could, I looked in the mirror and I could see my nostrils were kind of moving. And I really was, I was very, very worried then. I don't know. I'm laughing now, but at the time I was not laughing. Uh, I really didn't know what to do. I started to get dressed to to go and see to go to the MD. And then I was thinking, okay, what I'm what am I gonna tell to these people? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was kind of strange going there in the middle of the night and telling them I have bubbles going up my spine and I can't sleep because my nostrils are moving and, uh, and I don't know what's happening with me. So I decided to leave it to the next day. Um, you want me to continue? And then I, I called this woman who had introduced me to, to the meditation. And she said she had heard of something similar before, but she, she didn't really know what it 
was, or I mean, she she couldn't really help me so much with this. She just said, "Don't worry." But uh, <laughs> don't, worry. <laughs> don't worry, be happy. <laughs> I think that was kind of difficult, so I started doing research on the internet, and I'm lucky because I found chrism very, very, very quickly, actually. Um, probably about 10 days or two weeks after this happened, during the night I found, I found chrism, and I thought, okay, I'm just going to try and send an email, see, and maybe we'll be able to tell me what's happening, and he answered very, very fast. I was so happy when I got an answer, and so and so, uh, and then I, and then he, he invited me to go on the website. Um, and uh, yes, I, I was. Uh, how can I say? My mind could be at rest. I don't know if you can say that in English. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I think it, it changed everything because I. I knew there was somebody here to help. There was a community. I had information. So I think it helped me not to go into fear, really. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Chrism. Oh, well, thank, thank the Kundalini. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah. So so there you have it, folks. That's Magdalene de Deus. And, and that's a, a thumbnail sketch of her awakening process. So when you're talking to God, seriously, folks, don't think it's not being heard. When you're praying to Jesus or Buddha or Krishna, Allah, whoever it is, it's being heard. It's being listened to. You are not alone. You may think you're alone, but from a broader angle, from a wider perspective, it's a it's it's you know, it's a lot of attention being paid to a person like you. A lot of attention. And people are listening. Spirit is listening. God is listening. And if you ask if it is appropriate for me to be a healer and then please make those changes, well, hello. You can expect bubbles to start coming up your spine too. And, uh, you know, that's a very beautiful thing. And, and let's not forget that, you know, she said that the, the her her uh, nostrils were moving and hyperflaring of the nostrils is a very, very classical Kundalini experience. Your your nostrils will flare so wide, you will be in disbelief at how that could even be. Those nostrils, okay. And so and so really, when you're when you're saying the prayers for help for other people, it's being heard. It is being listened to, and it is being acted upon. You you need to know this. Make sure that you take your own agenda out of it. So, for instance, oh, dear Lord, heal my mom because, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to have to stop using her car. <laughs> you know, you and I know, and I and I know that most of you wouldn't do that, but there are some of the folks out here who are listening to this that'll do that. They think that they have the the right to begin to 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 insert their wants and desires into another person's healing equation. The aspect it must be for the benefit of another person. There must be a level of purity that a person has in order to make uh, these prayers the most effective. Magdalene de Deo, she has the purity. Now, if you know Magdalene, she's very kind. She's very considerate. Uh, no, she's not perfect, and none of us are while we're still in a body, but she's really working towards that. And I'm not saying that just because she's sitting right here. Of course, you know, she, I have all the sharp objects removed from the car, so that's, you know, that's just a safety thing. But <laughs> she is like Amelia and Rosemary and Eileen. These are people that are caring about another individual before they care about themselves. First, they reach out. You look at Rosemary. Rosemary, you know, she makes she, she buys jackets for the for the homeless. She makes sleeping bags for the homeless. She buys shoes for the homeless. How many people listening right now can say that? I'm waiting. Call in. 
347-934-0026. I want to know, do you, do you walk the streets looking for homeless people so that you can help them? Rosemary does. That's a big deal. And God is watching. Divinity is listening. Think about that. You are never alone. There is no such thing as privacy at all, except from other five five bodied, five kosher corporeal beings. Privacy on a spiritual level doesn't really exist. It's just our egos that want it to be that way. And it is our egos that must have it that way because, you know, not everybody's lifestyle is going to support having Kundalini awakening. A lot of people can get fired from their job if if they're found to have Kundalini awakening. You know, uh, you know, they'll just think you're just kind of flippy. I was here. I mean, I'm here in, in, in Sedona, and, and you know, and I, I was walking around for the first time for a Magdalene that she's been in in Arizona or Sedona, and I wanted to show her this place. And so we're, I'm walking around the stores here, you know. A lot of the people here are really, really not happy with spiritual, I think because, you know, they've seen so many crazy people come down here you know, espousing every different tradition, every different technique, every different this or that, and charging thousands and thousands of about it. You might have heard that one guy, somebody Ray, somebody Stevie, or I don't know, he was out here in Arizona, near Sedona here. And this is where they did their their uh their uh, um what do you call it when you have a teepee and you go in and it's really hot. This is their hot uh, uh Native American um technique that they were doing that killed people. This is this happened out here. And boy, I tell you what, this you don't need a light of fire inside that tent. All you gotta do is have it under the hot Arizona sun and that'll work. Right there. Right there. So so yeah there's not a lot of appreciation to, for the for the spiritual people down here. Except, you know, as you look at it, I mean it seems to be the underpinning of their entire economy. So when you come down uh, here to Sedona and the Arizona and these areas, as as in any area that you're traveling to. I don't care if it's Ireland where Amelia is or Florida where Aline is or Minnesota where Rosemary is. You're not coming. Yep, yes, I could really Hello. <laughs> doing that. You're not doing that. And I see a lot of folks trying to do Get in the way of prayer work. This can get in the way of your prayer work. Uh, let me bring it right down to a technique. I like the technique that Magdalene does. I do. And I'll suggest the technique to each and every one of you, unless you already have one of your own. I know that Amelia, she already has the way of feeling prayers and feeling the healings that she's being given. For Chrisom, Chrisom just looks right through the body and into the body and begins to adjust certain things along the lines of, of that healing that the Kundalini suggests to be done. Uh, other people have different techniques, but as long as separations are made and no great level of self-aggrandizement is being sought after or felt, then, then I think things can, can... There's a level of purity within that that will allow a... a an amazing level of healing to be given. Now, if you have any questions about that, that number is 347-934-0026. If you have any stories about your healing experiences with other people, uh, call in, 347-934-0026. I won't be going uh, for the full hour as, as I did last time. I think I cut it, it I think it was about two an hour. Uh, only because I'm sitting here in the car and, and I, you know, it's really hot. <laughs> Sweating here. So, <laughs> so uh, let that be the case for you. 
Go for your purity. Go for the level of grace that wants to express through you. Remember that two-way street with the Kundalini. When you pursue Kundalini, it pursues you. And always remember that having and wanting are two very different things. Okay, if you're ready to give to, to sacrifice your expectations and your attachments to this world, then allow the Kundalini to help you with that. If you're ready to be that key to say those prayers for other people, Magdalene does, like Amelia does, like Rosemary does, like Eileen does, like I do, like I feel Fosti does, and Steve does, and Julie does, and, you know, a lot of the private students do. Well, let the Kundalini express in you. Now, I know that a lot of people listen to this show when they're sleeping, and this is for them. Ah, 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 Take this information, express this information through your bodies, through your koshas. Sleep well and let the kundalini teach you of itself as you slumber. For the rest of us who aren't sleeping, I want you to really get to do the same thing that I just told the sleepers. Let the kundalini come to you. Read the material. Go to the Facebook group, uh, Waiting Exclamation Point. Go to the page, uh, uh, Chris Mitchell, on the Facebook uh, network. Go to Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com on the Internet. Go to Kundalini Awakening Systems 2 on the Facebook networks. And the Kundalini Awakening System 1 at Yahoo's Yahoo Network. Go to Kundalini Awakening on the uh, Google Bus work help people it's waiting for you to, to keep it right. you know maybe maybe chrism isn't the flavor of kundalini education that works for you then go somewhere else it's okay as long as you go with the guidance that the inner divine is sending you that's the most important thing it's not about a a, a human personality not about that at all it's about the grace of God flowing through you into this environment and into other people and plants and animals and insects and fish and water and air. Okay? Just a few things. Magdalene, how has the Kundalini affected your dream life? Um, so my dream life... Uh, very, very different from what it used to be. Um, I have dreams um, nearly every night, so I wake up in the middle of the night. Or what, what, what animal is the most present for you? So the most present is the spider. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's very often after, um, after a dream, I open my eyes and um, I see a spider floating in the air. A big spider or a little spider? Well, it depends. Uh, typically, they're not very small. <laughs> <laughs> but I must say, spider is the animal I've always feared the most. So I have to, I had to, to, to just surrender to this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, now, within the Kundalini context, Magdalene, what happened here? What happened here uh, in Sedona that has to do with the spider and you? What happened? What were we doing? 
Um, we were shopping with Chrism. Uh, I think, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to say what for. I was looking for T-shirts for my for my dad, and uh, and then I, we were going to leave. I remember I was sitting outside waiting for Chrism, and then Chrism called me. And apparently, this uh, very nice shop assistant told him, "Oh, I want to show you something." And I think it was more as a joke for her. And she showed Chrism two uh, some two earrings in the shape of a spider. Um, and she and of course we were both very interested then myself and Chrism, especially I mean the spiders they were. So it was the shape of a spider, but also the stone of, uh, what stone was it? Um, a turquoise. Yeah. And I know I've had dreamed, I have a dream concerning uh, me wearing some turquoise. Um, probably that would be good for me or something like this. So there, it was two spiders uh, with, a, I mean, in the sh yeah, two shapes of spiders plus the stone of the turquoise, so that was a very good combination. And of course, I bought the earrings. I've got them for me now. And also, I must say, um, when I bought those earrings, um, I think it was also a bit of a stretch for me because, as I said, I'm, I'm still not completely, um, completely uh, comfortable with spiders. So I thought if I put them next to me and I see. Uh, some something that's um, helping me in my process, that's protecting me. It will also help me. Well, this is interesting, and this this returns me to a memory that uh, that Amelia Santara and I had. I'm going to bring Amelia on here. Hello, Ireland. Calling Ireland. Wake up. Hello, hello, Sedona. <laughs> here I am. <laughs> yes, please. Can you tell the story of uh, the, the spider and tombstone? Oh, my goodness, yes. Okay. Um, let me see. So we're in tombstone, and I am sleeping. And, That's tombstone, uh, tombstone, Arizona. Yes. And I am sleeping, and outside I hear this. this I'm aware of, of this thing outside the door and it's going up and down the street and I know that it's not um, it's some kind of an entity thing and I'm, and I'm feeling a bit fearful and then outside the door I become aware that there is this huge giant spider I mean huge guarding the door between where I am sleeping and where this thing is outside and it's a giant spider and I can see it it's as how, big how, as the door when you say when you say giant, is how how big is giant? Oh, as big as the door. I mean, it's huge. It's not it's not a little one, and I can see the legs are standing out. You know, I mean, it's huge and hairy and and quite enormous. And I mean, spiders wouldn't be. I bet the magazine is going. <laughs> but, <laughs> Sorry, imagine them about that, but <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> but the amazing thing is, I knew it was the Shakti Kundalini, and I knew that the Shakti Kundalini was standing there in that form between me and whatever it was that was um, going up and down outside the street, because whatever that was knew um, we were inside and was interested. And I had this amazing connection with that spider. And when I think of that spider now, it is with, you know, it's very different. It's, it's with out fear and it is with gratitude and love. And I, think, yes. I mean, go ahead. Yeah, the legs, I can draw, but I'm not going to describe them. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they were huge. <laughs> Uh, you know, and not only that, actually, but it moved a little bit. You know, it wasn't just standing there statically. It kind of moved a little bit, um, just a couple of inches this way and then a couple of inches that way, so um, outside the door. And that was a tactile sound that I could hear as well, you know. Yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, the, yeah. The, here, here in the southwest, the, 
The spider is known as the sacred weaver woman who weaves the universe and holds it. So among the day, which, which other people, people call the Navajo, uh, the Navajo allow themselves to be called Navajo because it means enemy in their language. <laughs> but the Navajo, their actual name is the Diné, D-I-N-E, with an apostrophe over the E. Uh, the Diné people worship the spider. The spider is a good thing for them, and it is something that is that that is held in a sacred uh, 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 position within their society. Um, you know, the, That's some amazing. Of the northern... Yeah. But when I was a child, Chrisan, I mean, if my dad was here or my mom, they I always had visitations from spiders, and um, all through my childhood, and they were chasing me. They used to, um, they would be on my body. And um, the joke in my house was, well, any spiders tonight? I would come running out of the room hysterical because there would be huge spiders come down from the ceiling, from under the beds, and um, I'd lift my blankets. They would be there, and it was an absolute joke in my house about the spiders. And if only I had known. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, no, really. I mean, isn't it amazing how these visions or these dreams that we have, um, and we're totally unaware of of the significance of them, and that continued all the way up to my Kundalini awakening event. But after that, the spiders, and um, it was, it was, it, they were different. It was different. Stand by, gotta get let a let a bug go. There we go. Okay. No. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yes, and and Julie is actually there in the um the chat room now, and I know that Julie posted something today on the group about spiders, and she's having a very significant connection to spiders at the moment. She she wrote a very nice piece about um what spiders and spider webs are teaching her. I don't have it in front of me now, but um it was very very nice. Well, well, no more killing spiders. <laughs> Isn't it Seriously. amazing that that becomes something like what we were speaking about last week, a compulsion? I, I yeah. mean, the ca- I, I can't kill a spider now, you know? It's yeah. just, my goodness, it's something I could not do, you know? Here, here's something that I haven't told too many people that happened to me recently. Um, uh, I was... I have this little trailer that I sometimes go out to when I just need to be alone by myself, meditate, whatever. And uh, one night I was out there in this little camp trailer that I have, and I was just about to drift off to sleep, and the kundalini came to me and alerted me that there was a black widow spider in my camper and that I needed to be aware of that. And so I immediately jerk the light on and I'm looking for that black widow spider. It's like, okay, I don't see it now. Okay, whatever. Maybe I was just, you know, maybe just, you know, some fear surfacing or something like that. And and then I, and a day later, I was back in the trailer again and I, my gaze was turned, i.e., when I say my gaze was turned, my head was turned at just the right time that I could see the Black Widow, and where it was. And boom, I saw it. And I was going, oh, and I was thanking the Kundalini for giving me a heads up. And I'm going, well, what does it want me to do? Here's a test. Here's a test. Black Widow, poisonous spider, in the in the in in this little tiny trailer, and oh my gosh, you know, I'm not allowed to kill a spider. And so I just let it be there for a while. you got to remember that I'm not... Uh, I've never been attacked by a black widow, and I've been surrounded by them many, many times. I mean, within a foot or two of meditating every day for a year inside uh, an aluminum garden shed filled with black widow spiders. They never touched me once. They were very, very... And I never touched them either. I didn't do anything to to mess with their lives at all. Uh, And so I didn't want to kill this spider, and I wasn't going to kill this spider no matter what. Matter of fact, I didn't want to harm it. And I, 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 I came to the conclusion, okay, I'm just going to leave it there, and if it stays there, I'm fine with that. 
And if it wants to go into the into a cupboard or something like that, I'm fine with that too. As long as it doesn't travel. <laughs> <laughs> If it, if it travels, if it travels, I'm going to have a problem. Okay, so I told it that don't travel. <laughs> That's your spot. This is my spot. Fine, we'll share. Not a problem. Okay, and so one day I come back in and I see it's traveling, and oh my gosh! And so I just—it was an automatic move on my part. I just grabbed a cup, I scooped it up in a cup, and I and I tossed it outside, and I. Never had the problem again. But the magical part of this story for me is Kundalini telling me that it was even there. And so I want everybody who is interested in Kundalini to, to honor the spider. Honor the spider. It is not easy. Believe me, it is not easy. I've seen tarantulas out here in Arizona. That'll just make your head spin. I mean, they're huge, and they jump 12 feet. Uh, you know, you just be good with them. Don't go out and try to pick them up. I know the, the people that are really interested in, in, in arachnids, you know, and all that stuff, that's great. As long as you don't hurt them and you don't interrupt their life cycle, then they won't hurt you or interrupt yours. They're not hunting humans like humans are hunting them. Uh, there's a certain species out here in Arizona right now that, that, you know, they have their migration and they just, you see hundreds of giant, you know, I mean, gosh, geez, Louise, these are huge tarantulas uh, just walking across the desert. The males are, are looking for the females, that whole bit. So honor the spiders in your life. Honor the sacred weaver woman, sacred feminine. Notice the, the, the Native Americans didn't give the 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 spider a male persona or a male gender it gave a sacred feminine gender and this is very important to realize as well because it's a sacred feminine the kundalini that comes to us first the sacred father supports the sacred mother the sacred mother supports the sacred child get it mm. get it Magdalene? wait okay okay <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as we continue with this with this program about the healing, the spider also has very, very, very... It, it, for some of you who do not know, spider webs can be antimicrobial, antifungal, like moss. Okay. Um, which I don't want you going out there collecting spider web and throwing it on your broken arm. You know, go to the ER for the broken arm. Um but just know that there are remedies that use spider silk as a way to 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 address a wound or to to be to bring a person out into a healing vector for themselves. Uh, and out here, I have to say that you know the spiders are quite large; they're quite big, they're and they're quite aggressive out here, uh, but only aggressive to those who would disturb them. Or kill them, you know, like the, or those companies. He's not protecting Magdalene or, 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 or Amelia Centara. Or She's protecting all Kundalini people because she is part of the Kundalini context. The sacred spider is part of the Kundalini context, just like the serpent. And those two. Uh, in, con in you know in conjunction with each other will help develop very very positive healing frequencies those who can honor and recognize their presence and their position within the kundalini awakening experience know this there's a uh, if, yeah go ahead there's a conversation Christian, in the chat room so i share it with you yeah yeah, so Julie yeah. is saying she's always has, had an affinity, you know, with spiders. She saw a huge black spider when she was four or five. And um, when you were speaking about your um, Kundalini telling you about the spider, she went spidey sense, laughing out loud. I used to say I had that because I would get a feeling all over my body and then shortly afterwards I would find the spider. And Elizabeth says, now the children call for her to come and take the spiders out instead of their father because he squishes them. 
So that's kind of nice. That's lovely. That is nice. That is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't squish the spiders. Don't squish the spiders. Now, I was blessed with uh, also with the, the Kundalini coming to me uh, yesterday as I came down from from uh, one of the psychic vortexes here in Sedona. It's called Bell Rock. And Bell Rock is like the main vortex here that everybody goes to. And we were up there making friends with people from the other side of the country. And as soon as I started to come down, I, I took a step down, I, just like, a, like maybe 10 or 15 steps, and there was a snake right there waiting, waiting. And I noticed it, and it noticed me. He just kind of had a little, little, hey, how are you? And it knew I wasn't going to hurt him. You know, and uh, he very slowly and without any kind of anxiety, slowly, gently, slid it away. It was just nice to make the eye contact. The eye contact and the unspoken agreement that neither of us would harm either one. And we were friends. And, and, and we both left each other in peace and harmony without disturbing either of our life cycles. It was cool. Very cool. I had that experience yesterday. So, uh, as Magdalene mentioned to you, she has spiders come to her all the time. And, uh, you know, she had, you know, the equivalent of uh, the French version of arachnophobia. <laughs> <laughs> Is it any different in France? No, nothing. It's arachnophobia. <laughs> So yeah, so she and I'm going to welcome this topic right because it just it's it, it fits so well into the into the healing conversation we're having. Kundalini will heal your phobias. It will bring to to your presence those phobias that have existed for you since you were a kid. And it will it will begin to assimilate that fear and ground the fear so that it no longer affects you in the negative way, but but helps you understand in a very positive uh, context the level of grace that the animals have and the environment has with regards to the kundalini. Remember, the, the, the spider is at the top of the web. It's, a, it's the top of the food chain for its, its for, for arachnids, right? Spiders, spiders are a big deal. Um, more spiders here on this world than people. Think about that. Anyway, so if you would like to join our conversation, feel free. The number is 347-934-0026. I'm going to bring Eileen on board here. Hello, Eileen. Hi, Chrism. You got any good spiders out there in Florida? <laughs> oh, I haven't seen too many. I think I'm a little bit too high. <laughs> uh, you, you mean oh, yeah, you mean yeah. you mean you, you mean altitude wise, right? Yes, al- yes, 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 yes. <laughs> but we do have we do have a number of spiders. Um, some very dangerous ones if they take a liking yeah. to you. But I just I was thinking while you were talking, if you don't mind me saying a little bit. Um, I was always under the impression from your teachings that we need to get permission to heal someone. And if I understand what you're saying now, is it is... No, 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 no. There's a big difference between giving healing and giving a prayer for healing. Giving a prayer for healing uh, is an indication of not stepping in to the role of the healer, but letting okay, the kundalini yeah. do that. It's a very important distinction. Uh, okay, yes, okay. if you're if you're doing the hands-on thing, then you have to have permission to do that. If you're doing the prayer thing, you need no permission because the kundalini will do what it needs to do, what it feels is appropriate for that person's karma. It will do. Well, I I really appreciate that distinction because I have been concerned for myself not wanting to offer healing, you know, having to ask permission. But if it's a 
So now, uh, using prayer, I may be able to. No, you uh, no. There's what? no way you can you can actually do it. I can, you can do it. actually okay. do it. You just have and to so I, just you know just look into how you're you're forming the prayer and why. That's why I, I usually I usually suggest that people do prayers for strangers that they see in harsh circumstances. I do it all the time, and for me, it's just a it's just a glance, and the prayer is done. Right. And I right. can see I can see the effect on the person, and so so for you, Eileen, yes, yes, say the prayer. Always let the Kundalini do the prayer or, or do the work. Always pray to the right. Kundalini for that other person. And then the Kundalini, God does not need permission. <laughs> God does not need permission, my dear. Okay. Well, no, that's, and you, that's good. And you have the hand of God working on your shoulder. Okay, well, that clears things up a bit. <laughs> okay. All right, my dear. Not to hear you. Okay. Well, everybody, uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity, one last opportunity to, to make a phone call. Here it is. The number is 347-934-0026. 347 347- Nine three four zero zero two six. I want to to say thank you uh, to Amelia, Santara, Eileen, Rosemary, Magdalene, De Deus, Fashi, and Julie, and and Elizabeth, uh, uh, Gonzalez, Dalton, Gonzalez, E D G. Hello. <laughs> I would like to welcome any of our new and and. Uh, Beloved Kundalini friends that are that are there in the chat room, and also for the many of you that are going to listen to this in in the archive. Hello, hello, hello. Um, you can go on YouTube at Chrisum Kundalini, and that will take you to about 300 videos uh, for you to uh, partake of. Looks like we have a caller, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this. Here we are. Hello, caller. How are you? Oh, darn, it's that Foster guy again. Ah, buddy. <laughs> hello, hello. Hello. We've been having the so much spider, fun here. I've just been king. enjoying everything. The Spider King. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, you know, I don't happen to be um, one that uh, dreams of spiders, but uh, since I said that, perhaps the Kundalini will provide an experience for me. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to it, but, uh, you know, we'll deal with it as it comes. Yeah, that's the best attitude, I feel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted not, to jump in here just for a moment. Be- I beg your pardon? <laughs> you may not have spider karma. Well, uh, you know, um, let's hope not. But if I do, then I'll just deal with it as I do now, cautiously, just, but with great respect. <laughs> just be friendly. <laughs> yeah. Just be friendly. Friendly and respectful. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yes, that's, that's the way I, I try to go about it. I um, I did call in because I I had something uh, that I wanted to just um, share. Um, please, please. As um, a few of you know, I I've recently gone through a loss of uh, the transition of my uh, only remaining sister, who I love very deeply. Um, and I had to journey to Maryland um, to actually attend the memorials, uh, the memorial service. So I um, I was going to drive, uh, and that's about seven and a half hours of driving. And since I've been somewhat a bit crippled by my uh, my health problems, I uh, my mother. Uh, my niece and my wife did not want me to drive, so I had to fly on an airplane. And I had, uh, for some reason, a bit of apprehension about being on airplanes. But uh, God knows why with all of the things that are going on with airplanes in, uh, in the world today. But um, anyway, um, I overcame that, and I, I got on an airplane and, and made the trip there. But um, I wanted to just say this uh, at the beginning of each and every one of my uh, meditations I 
I, t- I try to do the prayer um, to divinity and the divine kundalini. And at the tail end, I give thanks for all that it was gained through the union of uh, this meditation. And that I, I only hope that all, my, my hope is that all within the divine body of, of the Holy Spirit, all the divine kundalini, will also uh, will also um, I'm looking for a word here will also benefit from what I was able to gain through that so I, I try to make it as, such that all of creation is able to to benefit from whatever was given to me during the period of union uh, through meditation so I did this, and I, I um, of course, was asked to speak at the memorial service. And now that my my um, emotional body is somewhat stable, uh, <laughs> I'm able to speak about this. So yeah, at the yeah. tail end of my what, on my talk, I I spoke about um, a number of the safeties. Strangely enough. I guess I've, I've, I've be, it's become so much a part of me that I, I feel that everybody needs to to really uh, take advantage of this. And I, I'll just share, I, I spoke yeah. of only just a few of them. I'm sorry, Master C. I said, very good. Please do. I spoke of forgiveness, honesty, inner joy, and prayer, gratitude, and love. And I, I have to tell you that I could feel... It was palpable in the room when I started to speak of the safeties, um, how the Kundalini started to descend into the room and to comfort everyone. And I wanted to mention that, you know, what you say a lot of times is that it could be an activation sequence too, uh, the safeties. And they are very important um, to our unfoldment spiritually. So uh, after I finished, I I happened to notice that my body was not responding uh, as I would like it to have, and uh, I started to stumble, but I was able to get back to my chair. Um, As I got back to my chair and we continued with the, the rest of the service, I hadn't realized that I was in a heightened state of consciousness. And... um, Towards the end, my 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 uh, my niece started to lose it because, of course, she and her mother were best friends, and I think I shared this with you, Chrism, that um, my body started, to, my hand started to pulse with this this divine energy to comfort her uh, during this this most trying time, and I actually saw the the difference in her demeanor. Now I don't know if she. Really, you know, got a chance to feel what was what I was feeling, but I saw a definite change in her, and I was very grateful to have met you uh, and started on this process of the Kundalini, because you know it's been quite a while since I had my initial awakening experience. You, you've been you've been working. Uh, we've been. I've known you since what 2006, 2007. Well, it's been at least uh, six and a half, seven years now, and yeah, uh, even yeah. before then, I, I had that top down. But I've been fortunate right. enough to have it um, uh, come through properly from the bottom up, and uh, <laughs> now, I think now. they call it uh, a, a, some kind of spinal sweep or something like that. But at any rate, I am most grateful, um, and I just wanted to share that sometimes. The Kundalini will make its decision on who will be healed in our presence uh, without us really making a, 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 a concerted effort to do it. Uh, it just comes well, especially through. Especially if you're awakened. If you're awakened, that Kundalini can grab it and it will pull itself to all who need healing in that room. You know, and you may not be able to see, you may not be able to see the, the you know, you may not be able to see it on them, but it is there. It is there. It is, it's as real as the shoes on your feet, and 
and the fact that you were that you felt the the, the kundalini pulsing through, through your palms is just is a huge indication of what is occurring. It doesn't matter whether you see the results. What matters is that the kundalini is giving the results through you. And you, my friend, Fashji, you have only to thank yourself and God and the grace that's flowing within you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Master C. You, you have thank this, you very much. You have this in... in you know, you're you're using it, and it's using you in the ways that are, are very beneficial for other people. Uh, I want yeah. you to always know that whether you're on a train, whether you're in a car, whether you're on a bicycle, whether you're just walking, Kundalini is with you. Kundalini cares about you, and it will protect you from everything. doesn't mean, you know, you're going to play blind man's bluff on the way. <laughs> but it does mean... That uh, that you got an extra, shall we say, spiritual grace that follows every movement of your life, every thought that you think, and every action that you do. And don't don't see it as a you know, oh my gosh, God is watching me because I, you know, left the toilet seat up or something like that. Right? <laughs> don't not, not about. That. Although all the all the women are going, oh yes, it is. It's exactly. <laughs> Well, you know, I just wanted to say this. Um, recently, um, I, I have sometimes I have a problem distinguishing between me and it, and I see that as a blessing. Uh, I'm grateful for it. Uh, sometimes I don't know which one of us is actually thinking, so <laughs> I try to keep stick to the practice uh, as you prescribe, uh, Master C, and. Uh, I'm just very grateful to to everyone, uh, uh, Magdalene, uh, Santara, Rosemary, uh, um, my good friend, and I, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now, but she always helps me, Eileen. And well, how did you know that? Well, you know. And of course, Julie and, and all the rest that that is so so. Um, uh, just active within this this whole sphere of of of, of, of spirituality. I you thank know, you. You know, I thank Pastor, you, Master C. What, what, what cracks me up? What cracks me up about this? Our little program here is that uh, you know we have all these activated women, right? all these active women. My gosh, coming out the ears of women, and Osho's Osho's telling everybody, girls can't have kundalini. <laughs> <laughs> that is a joke, isn't what? it? <laughs> I don't, I don't see it that way. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Uh, you know, <laughs> Sacred Feminine, I'm sure, doesn't see it that way either. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah just, you know, I see we're, we're uh, I'm, and I'm very pleased to see so many women activating. I think it's exceptionally important. And I just want to say, you know, thank you, Fashi, for for having the 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 courage to call. Number one, and the courage. So many to... women. Yes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Say something nice. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Love Fachi. to all of you. <laughs> courage. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. No, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm at ease. I'm at ease uh, amongst all of this, and. I, I, you know, in in the in the in the past um, practice that I was in, because uh, when I'll share this and I'll get off, it was uh, a group or a select group of women that surrounded Paul Twitchell before he actually brought it out, uh, and they were they actually were very very instrumental in it becoming a reality. So I, I don't, you know, I don't look at this, you know. In a, in, a, in a negative way, I see this as, as something that's being been very positive for the Kundalini and for you as well, Master C. And I thank you for allowing me to just share this um, because it's it's been a, a, a source of pain, but yet a, a, a source of awareness, growing awareness within me. Mm-hmm. So, well, thank I'll, you, um, thank you, Master C. Yeah, yeah, thank I'll you for sharing. Thank you. Well, thank you for stepping in. 
Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll step in. I'll go into the green. <laughs> go into the blue. <laughs> bye-bye, bye-bye. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Everyone, with that, I would like to say thank you for listening to this broadcast. I would like uh, Her Holiness, Amelia Centaur, to come online. And and I'd like to thank uh, John O'Connor and uh, Amelia Centaur, their family, for for providing the this show for everyone. This is this this is because of them, everyone. See, they get all the blame. <laughs> Oh no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so really, thank you, thank you both. I mean, really, this is a, such a beautiful gift that you're giving to people. Um, Amelia, thank you. I've been reading you on 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 the the Facebook. I really like what you've been reading or what you've been writing about devotion. Please continue. Uh, feel feel free to spread that into any of the groups. Okay, you've been writing very well about that, and I would encourage everybody to read uh, her teachings. Of devotion, devotion is exceptionally important. And the the more devotion you have, the, once again, the, the Kundalini really amplifies itself through uh, devotion, uh, through your devotion to it, and therefore through itself into you and into others around you. So thank you, Amelia, for that as well. You're you're welcome, I would like and to- thank you for being here and and for all the teachings that you give. Um, it's wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you, Amelia. And I'm going to put you into the blue, and I'm going to say uh, many, many thanks to to Magdalene de Deus. Magdalene, thank you for joining us the pro- on this program today. Thank you, Chrism, and thank you to everybody who's listening today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. This is Chrism signing off from Sedona, Arizona, and I hope to talk with you again next week. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Bye-bye.